Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Bill. Today's video is going to continue the battle magic, the war magic uh, uh, videos I was doing. This is going to be second level defined spells. We're going to look through them, see what have awesome battle ranges without needing to be modified, and what we could possibly modify to throw on troops or into items or on weapons to make the battles far more magical and far more devastating. So if you're running a high magic campaign, this will give you lots of influence. If you wanted to include this in a low magic campaign as something they could find from a previous era, this would also be very entertaining. If they could find a journal that describes some of this stuff, that would inspire players to do more. So let's dive into second level divine spells. We're going to start with the cleric spells first, and then we'll do the druid spells right after. So the first thing you get on the list is aid at second level, which boosts your saves versus fear, gives you temporary hit points. So if you had that on maybe a potion or you had that on a one use item that the army could uh, carry, then they could resist the first round of fear, gain extra hit points and be a little bit better at attacks. A line weapon. Weapon becomes good, evil, law, or chaotic. That would only be useful if you're fighting outsiders for the most part. So if you are fighting outsiders, having a uh, oil, like a potion, having an oil you could pour on the weapon that is of the alignment that you need, or having uh, maybe a uh, piece of paper that you burn the and rub the ashes on to trigger that effect and let that effect last an hour or so, that would be useful. Augury is not that useful for a uh, battlefield, but could be very entertaining if you're trying to ask, if we move this left, is this going to be good or bad? Because Augury, as I remember it without looking it up, is only like 50% accurate to begin with. Bears Endurance, plus four con, bull strength, so... The stat boosters, I believe I said earlier, aren't that useful, but if you had them as one use to access to your uh, your military and they last for at least an hour, that could be more useful. So they, they drink, uh, say, potions of bull strength for your melee guys with the spears and the shields. Well, now they're stronger, they're able to hit harder. Then you go into your... the Dex one, Cat's Grace, you give that to your archers. Now they can shoot a little bit more accurate, a little bit uh, faster with their initiative. So that could be the way to capitalize into those. But other than that, those aren't that useful for a battlefield. Calm Emotions can be very useful if you got a bunch of charging animals coming at your military. Consecrate. Consecrate can only be useful if you're prepping an area ahead of time against undead. And by ahead of time, I mean the amount of time it takes to cast Consecrate. Since I'm talking about it in that way, let's look it up to know for sure. Okay, so I'm wrong. Casting time is a standard action, so you put a couple of clerics in melee combat before the uh, the battle breaks out. They can cast Consecrate as a standard action. It's a 20-foot radius centered where they cast it. And then everything within that radius that is undead would suffer a minus three or you would add three to the DC of any positive energy stuff you're doing. The undead would also suffer, suffer a minus one to attack rolls and damage and saves. If you have an altar, a shrine, 
or a permanent fixture dedicated to your deity, the bonus is increased by double and the penalties increase by double. So that can be real useful if you're in your deity's graveyard and there's statues of her all around, just target the statues. Okay, so that was concentrate, no, concentrate. Cure moderate wounds isn't that useful in a battlefield unless you have it as one use items that your military has access to. So if your soldiers are carrying or your more powerful soldiers are carrying potions, they can drink those to stay up and stay fighting for a lot longer. Death Nail kills dying creatures. You gain 1d8 temporary hit point. Death Nail might be useful. Let's look it up to make sure. Okay, Death Nail is limited to a single creature. And they get a will save. They have to be at minus one or fewer hit points. If it fails the save, it dies, and you gain 1d8 temporary hit points and plus two to your strength temporarily. Oh, and your caster level goes up by plus one. So this could be real good to increase your caster level if you were not of the good aligned uh, cleric type. But the only downside is you can only kill one with death nail. It's not an area effect. So you need more like death, death nail mass. So whatever cure moderate wounds mass spell level is, I would say that would be your death nail mass, which could be very mean. Delay poison, not that useful in a war situation, more useful after a war situation has concluded. Desecrate, same as consecrate, so that's useful. Eagle Splendor, that's the ability increase. Enthrall. Enthrall sounds like it's good because it captivates all within 100 feet plus 10 feet per level. Let's look at it. Enthrall. Duration, one hour or less. We'll save, okay. Okay, so all creatures w that are paying attention to you, uh, if you can speak or sing for one full round to them, they give you their undivided attention, ignoring their surroundings. They are considered to be friendly to you for the remainder of the spell effect, which lasts one hour or less. If they have a religion or they're a race that's unfriendly towards yours, they get a plus four on the saving throw. So cobalts versus gnomes, anything that's fighting humans normally would get a plus four save. A target with four or more hit dice or with a wisdom score of 16 or higher remains unaware of its surroundings and ha no, remains aware of its surroundings and has attitude of indifferent. It gains new saving throw if with witnessing actions that is that it opposes. The effect lasts as long as the speaker, as long as you speak or sing, to a maximum of one hour. Those enthralled by your words take no action while you speak or sing, and for one d three rounds thereafter while they discuss the topic or performance. So when you stop for d three rounds, they'll still be. Uh, enthralled for the most part. Those entering the area during the performance must also successfully save or become enthralled. The speech ends, but the 1d3 round delay still applies if you lose concentration or do anything other than speak or sing. If those not enthralled have unfriendly or hostile attitudes towards you, 
they can collectively make a charisma check to try to end the spell by jeering and heckling. For this check, use the charisma bonus of the creature with the highest charisma in the group. Others may make charisma checks to assist. The heckling ends the spell if the check result beats your charisma check result. Only one such challenge is allowed per use of the spell. So for the uh, use of the spell, they can only challenge you once. If any member of the audience is attacked or subject to some other a really hostile act, the spell ends to pervade, and the previously enthralled members become immediately unfriendly towards you. Each creature with four or more hit dice or with a wisdom score of 16 or higher becomes hostile. So you get a couple of guys in the front lines and you give them course tact first and you get your other group to maneuver. You can have sections of the army, if not the whole front lines of the army, enthralled. And you can maneuver your other forces to the so flanks or to the sides and really hit them hard whenever you either end the enthrall or the enthrall ends on its own or uh, they're ready to attack. So that could add some devastating effects. Now add to that, put it on a uh, instrument, give it to a bard and say that you can only use it once per week. That's still deadly in a military conflict if they're uh, tooting on a horn, banging on a drum, or uh, playing a uh, mandolin in front of the army and everyone gets enthralled. So that one is definitely a military spell, a battle spell. Find traps. It's never been as useful as it says. You notice traps as a rogue does. Anyone can find a trap is the way I've always played it. Rogues just get a, uh, their level as a bonus to the skill. That said, the only time I've taken it as a cleric, I had no ranks in perception, and the game I was playing was third edition, so search. I had no ranks in search, and it doesn't give you a bonus to it. It just allows you to find traps like a rogue would. Gentle repose preserves one corpse. Could be good if you're preserving a hero's corpse to take back to town. Hold person. Paralyzes one humanoid for one round per level. It's not that great in a military conflict. Very great in a small uh, skirmish that you would do normally with a D&D &D party exploring stuff. Inflict moderate wounds. Touch attack deals 2d8 plus 1 per level, max plus 10. That could be useful if you put that on a ranged touch weapon or a ranged weapon. So I give you all sling bullets of uh, inflict moderate wounds. In your first round, you're supposed to volley these sling bullets at the enemy. Well, most militaries, the soldiers have a D8 hit points, maybe a D8 plus one. And these are the conscript soldiers, not the really well-trained soldiers. So those would pretty much be taken out within the first volley, especially if they're hit more than once. So that can devastate an enemy's uh, initial ranks. That said, you could take the first level version of that and do the same thing. And if it doesn't decimate them, it would weaken them if you hit enough of them. And if you make it only activate upon touch, like after it comes out of sling, it activates by touch, then it doesn't even have to hit the AC, it just has to hit the touch armor class. And if they're in formation, the touch armor class is like seven. But that's shield wall formation, just for perspective. Make hole repairs an object that could be useful after a combat. Else wisdom, remove paralysis, resist energy. Resist energy can be useful if it's in a uh, spell, put on a shield, carried it like a scarf or something on the uh, soldiers, even if it's only once per week. You give them resist energy 10 to, say, fire. Fire is very common in battle. So give them 10 to fire. Okay, so 10 points of fire damage per attack would be ignored. That can actually make your military almost march through fire and be okay. 
Lesser Restoration dispels magical ability penalty or repairs 1d4 ability damage. Not useful in the combat, but could be useful after if a bunch of ability damage was dealt out. Shatter. Sonic Vibration damages objects or crystalline creatures. Let's look that one up. Shatter. Close range, 25 feet plus 5 feet per tree level. Area or target, 5 foot radius spread or a solid object or one crystalline creature. So, not great unless you have a specific target to target or you're very close to everything you want to hit in the 5 foot radius. Mostly targets glass and crystalline stuff, but that could be useful because there are glass golems and such, so... It can be useful, just not that great as a battlefield spell. Shield other, you take half of the subject's damage. That's not great in a battlefield. But in skirmishes or in prolonged fights that are small in scale, say uh, your D&D group versus another uh, adventuring group, that can be very useful, especially if you cast that on either somebody that doesn't have a lot of hit points normally or somebody that has a boatload of hit points, because that would, as long as it's active, pretty much double their hit points. Downside is, is you're taking all that damage, even if you're not in melee. Silence. Negates sound in a 20-foot radius. Not useful, not that useful as it is. Put that on a ranged weapon, put that on uh, something else, shoot it at the enemy the commander that needs the command or the uh, those that need to make sounds to encourage the army, say the bards and whatnot, put it in those areas, put it where the uh, spellcasters are. If you could just launch weapons that have that activate, that w it by itself would change how a battle's going. Because you drop that in front of a wizard, unless they have si steel spell, no, not steel spell, silent spell, they can't cast anything. They have to get out of that area. That said, they don't have to get far to get out of that area, but if you're launching that everywhere, say a first volley towards the uh, spellcasters is all uh, no uh, sound, um, silence, then they're going to have a hard time getting out of that. And then your military can just do what a military does after that. Sound burst. Deal 1d8 sonic damage to subjects and may stun them. Let's see if that has a better range. Sound burst. 10 foot radius spread. So its range is a little bit better. You'll be able to take out a 20 foot square. So that could take out a section of the, the army. It doesn't say it's centered on you. The range is 25 feet plus five feet per two levels. And it's just 10 foot uh, radius spread. So 20 foot area. Spiritual weapon, magical weapon attacks on its own. You have a few soldiers be able to activate a spiritual weapon. That increases the amount of attacks in a turn. And it can't be targeted to really stop without, like, disrupt, uh, not disrupt, dispel magic or someone else able to cast a spiritual weapon to dispel it. That can allow you to get off a lot more damage, especially if it's a once-per-week item. Activate this once-per-week item, and you have half of your forces have it. Well, now you have half as many or a quarter as many extra attacks going on from your full force. Summon Monster 2. Summon Monster Spell isn't that useful in a war setting. Undetectable alignment could be useful if you're worried about being detected, but in a military setting, eh. 
zone of truth. That'll be good if you're trying to get information from people you've captured, other spies, other scouts. Now let's go into the druid spells. Second level, animal messenger. Okay, that's great for passing messages along. Animal trance, fascinates 2d6 hit dice of animals. And that can be useful if you encounter a bunch of animals that you want to utilize later. Bark skin, increases natural armor. That could be useful as one use items on your military. They get plus two to their AC from their skin turning scaly or barky. Bears endurance, wool strength, cat's grace, same effects as the cleric. Chill metal. Now, chill metal would be very bad if you have if you could cast that on a guy in full plate without them noticing, or on the armor on a horse. Because the longer it's on them, the more damage it does. Same thing with uh, heat metal. So I won't have to go over both of these at the same time. It's just the damage type's different. Instead of cold, it's hot. Well, with the chill metal, you could also put that on an arrowhead or a sling bullet. I prefer arrowhead or bolt head. Fire that if you can hit the target. So say the military has, your military has access to these, the silent arrows and... Uh, true Strike Potions. Drink a True Strike Potion. Fire one of these, Heat Metal or Chill Metal, into one of the guys that has the full plate. Now, if he can't remove the arrow, which usually they can't, they're more likely just to snap the shaft than they are to pull the head out. Then as the subsequent turns go, they'll be taking the cold or hot damage, and uh, it'll go up and then down in damage. Usually lasts about 10 rounds, but the amount of damage is only for like four or five rounds. Delay poison stops poison from har harming subjects for one hour per level. That can be useful. If you're aware that your enemies are using lots of poison, you can give your military use of this, whether it's through potion or through a one-use item, or even a one once per week item, something that they can reuse. Fire Trap. Opened object deals a d4 plus one. Well, that's good for protecting your documents, but that destroys your documents, so there's pluses and minuses there. Flame Blade. It's useful for individual and melee. Flaming Sphere. Flaming Sphere would be useful because you can roll that around the enemy's uh, military. But overall, the range isn't very long, so you would have to balance that with the fact that you'd have to be close to them to use it as a spellcaster. Fog Cloud. Now, Fog Cloud could be useful. Give a bunch of people access to Fog Cloud on their shield, even if it's once per week. If the duration is at least a couple minutes, that can mask whatever's going on. Just be aware that strong gust of winds or strong natural wind will blow this away. Heat metal, hold animal. Hold animal would be very useful against a charging force. If you could cast multiples of these, or you have a few spellcasters that can't, you can halt pretty much a charging uh, knight, a charging cavalry. Reduce animal, shrinks one willing animal. That can be mean. I reduce the, uh, the black bear. I tell it to go uh, investigate the enemy's uh, food. And when there, I end the spell. Now it's a full-size black bear that they thought they had a cub coming in. Resist energy, same as before. Lesser restoration. Okay, softened earth and stone can be used to really transform your battlefield. Uh, it turns stone to clay or dirt to sand or mud. So let's see how big of a range that is. Ten foot square, okay. So it's a ten foot square, so it's not that big of a range. So as far as a full military thing, probably not that useful. Now, if you were 
on a very limited road that say an elevated road with hillsides on both sides going down into valleys then that could work you could isolate that road and make that road hard to pass or you could uh put it in front of a doorway or a narrow entrance into a valley make use of it that way you could also use it under stone by turning it by turning a section into clay that stone could potentially become loose and fall off of a cliffside or something spider climb that could be useful if you're trying to get into an area that nobody expects you in and you don't have great climbers to begin with it's hard to fall off of an object when you're stuck to it like a spider so with that ability if you could give that to your strike force your scouts uh, if you can give it to them, even if they can only use it once per week, that once per week would be this mission that they're going on. That's more than enough to get them into position to sneak in and deal out some damage. Summon nature's ally, like summon monster spell, not that useful. Summon swarm. Summon swarm I could see being very useful. So let's look at that. And my first reference before looking this up of a summon swarm being useful is old Greeks and Romans used to throw beehives at enemy ships or into enemy locations, and then the bees would just wreak havoc. So, and that's without magic. So, imagine adding magic to this. Summon Swarm. Range is close, so the downside is you have to be close to where you want to use this. So that could be very bad as a, as a spellcaster in a war setting. Duration lasts two rounds plus the amount of time you spent concentrating. So you do the concentration first, and then afterwards it stays for two more rounds. There is no saving throw. There is no resistance. You summon a swarm of bats, rats, or spiders, your choice, which attack all creatures within this area. You must summon the swarm so that it shares the area of other creatures. If no living creatures are within its area, the swarm attacks or pursues the nearest creature as best it can. The caster has no control over its target or direction of travel. So you summon this and then you pretty much run away. And that can be very useful. Where was it? Second level spell. Summon Swarm. Tree Shape. You look exactly like a tree for one hour per level. That's okay if you're trying to scout and you just don't want to be noticed. Warp Wood. That could be useful for getting into places that uh, they have barred off. Or you could destroy some enemies' uh, shields or hafted weapons and such. But as far as I know, that's a single target, so usefulness on a battle scale would be you'd have to give this to a lot of soldiers to be able to use against their enemy soldiers, even if it's only one use. Wood shape reshapes wooden objects to suit you, and that's the end of it. So, With that, that's what I got as far as what would be useful in a battle using the divine spells. Combine that with some arcane spells, and you probably got a lot of devastation ahead of you. And this is only second level magic. Now, imagine when you get into fifth level and sixth level spells. After a certain point, which I think it's fifth or sixth level spells, I'm not going to do anymore because at that point, all spells could be very useful for the effects that you're looking for. And if not, you just pick the wrong spell of that level. But that's why you can get scrolls and expand your spell book and whatnot. So, hope this helped you guys uh, contemplate more devious and interesting things you can do in your uh, games. Until we meet again.